Sorry guys, it became late. Good morning. Guys? Ah, hello. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. I'm sorry it became late. Okay. So yeah, so we have uh, completed your uh, redox reactions chapter, isn't it? Right? So now we'll be starting with uh, <clears throat> gaseous state, right? Okay. Or in your book, it is also called the states of matter. Like I'll be calling it as gaseous state because like even though your chapter name says it's states of matter, but 90% uh, or 95% of this chapter deals with uh, gases only, right? Okay. <clears throat> So let, let us go back, like let us go back to our lower classes when we were in uh, ninth class, I guess, right? So there were, uh, there was a chapter named uh, matter in our surroundings, isn't it? If you can remember, right? So there was the first place where you were introduced to a term called as matter, isn't it? So again, I will write that also. Okay. So this term matter, which you're speaking here, right, was first first introduced to you when you were in ninth class. <clears throat> in the chapter called as uh, matter in our surroundings, right? Okay. So there, how do you define matter, people? What is matter? Hmm? What do you mean by matter? Is and has mass. Ah, it's correct. Called, so anything which has mass and occupies space is what is called as matter. Yes, right. Okay. And then uh, one more uh, thing about matter is that all matter <clears throat> is made up of some kind of elementary particles, right? All matter is made up of some kind of elementary particles. Now, again, the first thing you should not go to your mind that, ah, okay, matter is made up of atoms. Not necessarily, right? So when I say particles, right, when I say particles, these particles can be anything. It can be atoms, it can be molecules, it can be ions, it can be radicals, it can be anything, right? So, but any matter will be made up of some kind of elementary particles, which or it's millions and millions of them will be together, and that makes up matter, right? Okay, fine. So now, all these particles, which I'm talking about, right? So, will have some characteristic properties. Right, all these particles which makes up matter, right, will have some characteristic properties. Uh, how to put it? So there are three main characteristic properties, right? So we know uh, <clears throat> between any two uh, particles, right? Between any two particles, there will there will exist a force of attraction, right? There will exist a force of attraction. That's what keeps them together, isn't it? That's what keeps them together. So between any two particles, I'll have some force of attraction. Right, that's the first characteristic property. Second property is that uh, between any two uh, particles, I will have some, uh, what to say, some space between them. That space is what is called as your intermolecular space. Right, so it is not like they will be like this. No, they will like they can be like this, but still, ideally speaking, there is still some space in between them. Right. So what I'm telling is, there if there are two particles, they'll definitely be some space in between them, right? And that space is what is called as your intermolecular space, right? Okay, and this is the second property. Third property is that all the particles, all the characteristic particles will have some kinetic energy, right? What, what do you mean by having kinetic energy? That means they will be continuously moving. <clears throat> They'll be undergoing continuous random motion, right? Inside the matter, right? So these three are the properties, inter, uh, intermolecular force, intermolecular space, and your kinetic energy, right? Okay, now based on these three properties, right? Based on these three properties, I will be able to classify matter into three states of matter, right? Classify matter into three, uh, three states of matter being solids, liquids, and gases, right? Okay, so obviously in solids, liquids, and gases, this intermolecular space, intermolecular force, and kinetic energy values, all of them will be different, isn't it? Why? We know that 
because in case of solids i know they are very closely packed right all the uh, molecules are very closely packed so the intermolecular space is very less right and obviously uh, <clears throat> more and more closer the molecules are more and more closer the molecules are more and more will be the force of attraction isn't it so obviously solids have the maximum force of attraction minimum intermolecular space right and obviously what about kinetic energy so if i since it is highly densely packed right the molecules are like say restricted to move freely right so solids are going to have the minimum kinetic energy right among all these three right above among solids liquids and gases solids will have minimum kinetic energy okay now when i go to liquids <clears throat> right so when i go to liquids uh, i know the interparticular space is little more than uh, in case of your solids right and obviously the interparticular force is also great or sorry lesser than in the case of solids and obviously when i speak about kinetic energy we know water all these liquids can move like say they can flow and all that right so obviously the kinetic energy value of your liquids is also also uh, more than that of solids okay now come going going to the part which we are still going to study that is my gases gases are going to have the maximum interparticle space right and they have a minimum force of attraction and because of all this they have the maximum kinetic energy right and obviously we know <clears throat> they are the one which will be able to move easily around and obviously they will have the maximum kinetic energy right fine so these three points that is they have the maximum space minimum force of attraction and maximum kinetic energy are actually going to tell a lot about uh, the, the properties of gases right lot tell a lot about properties of gases okay now in your 11th class we'll be studying about your gases right and little little there and there about uh, liquids but liquids will be studying in depth in physics right in your fluid mechanics right we'll uh, start uh, fluid mechanics will be studying in depth about liquids we will not touch uh, so much about it right we'll just see the superficial layers of that gases we'll see in depth right and solids you'll be studying in your 12th class there's a separate chapter called as solid state right uh, which will which will be the first chapter in your 12th class so at that time we'll concentrate on solids right okay so moving on here to gases right so we understood what gases are uh, what are the three properties of these gases and all that we have understood right so <coughs> now if you want to study about something right if you want to study about something right now there has to be some measurable properties okay what i'm telling tell you is say for example right uh, you want to describe me right you want to describe me okay so what will you tell ah sir is so tall he has a beard he is so stupid right so all these things you will say correct so what you are trying to do is you are you are you are already having some measurable properties with me say for example uh, the height is a measurable property the beard again the length of the beard is a measurable property stupidity yeah we will not be able to measure but still <laughs> right so then what i'm trying to tell you is you need to have some measurable properties uh, measurable quantities right uh, so that you will be able to study better about that particular uh, matter or whatever the substance is right so here also we are going to have some measurable properties right and the three main measurable properties of a gas is going to be pressure volume and temperature right we are, we are we will be studying about pressure volume and temperature in depth basically uh, in what state in what how to put it uh, what in what situation the particular gas is in right will be decided by the pressure volume and temperature of the gas right and obviously if i know the pressure temperature and volume right i will be able to predict how the gas will behave uh, if i change any of these parameters say for example uh, initially it was some pressure of pvt pressure volume temperature of vpvt so if i increase some pressure what will happen or if i increase the temperature what will happen right all these things can be predicted if i know uh, these uh, values like if i know the measurable properties of the gas right so before going on to see how uh if i change one of the parameters how the other things are changing before we study about it 
we really need to understand what is this pressure uh, what are the different units of pressure what exactly is volume and how temperature can be related to all these things we'll see first okay and among these three right among these three uh, you already know something about temperature but pressure is actually a problem so we we'll start with pressure right what exactly is pressure how we are going to interpret pressure for a gas right and uh, let me i'll even tell you something about how do we measure pressure right so all these things we'll try to do it okay fine so talking about pressure of a gas right okay let us assume the situation right so i have a beaker okay say i have a closed beaker right so inside this i have gas particles present right inside this i have some gas present okay now i we already spoke about it we already know that gas molecules will have some kinetic energies right they'll be um, among all these three they will be the one which will be very easy very free to move and all that we already studied isn't it so now we can you can see that say this particle like any random uh, gas particle you take any random gas molecule you take right they will be in constant random motion right so when they are undergoing that kind of motion right when they are undergoing that kind of motion uh, you can see that they will be able to undergo two types of collisions what do you mean by collision this is collision banging right so that two types of collisions might happen right what are the two types of collision say the first collision can be uh, between one molecule and another gas molecule collision might happen right say uh, this molecule will collide with this molecule which is there that is one type of collision right now the other type of collision which can happen is any of these molecules will go hit the walls of the container <clears throat> isn't it any of these molecules obviously like randomly they are moving so they will go hit the walls of the container correct so now if they do this right now all the gas particles are doing this isn't it they will eventually go hit the walls of the container correct so obviously uh, the there will be some force with which it it hits the walls of the container right there will be a very small force say so let me call that force as df right the force with which the gas particles are hitting the walls of the container right let me keep it as df right and obviously uh, there will be a very small area there will be a very small area in which that collision is happening now i'm not talking about the area of the whole vessel no i'm talking about the point of contact right a point of contact means say the gas particles go hitting the walls of the container at this point right i'm talking about the area of that point right i'm talking about the area of that point right okay and that will anyways be a small area but anyway we'll not speak about it right we'll speak about it in different way say now i'll say this is df uh, df right so like this i will have so many dfs coming because there are so many molecules right so there are so many molecules so in, if i integrate this df or what, what do we mean integrate getting all the values to get the summing of all the values you will be getting the total force you will be getting the total force and obviously if i divide the total force by the total area of this cylinder sorry sorry vessel right if i uh, divide the total force by the area of the vessel right and why now what will i get i will be getting the pressure of the gas i know for f is p is equal to f by a, isn't it pressure is force per unit area <coughs> isn't it right so pressure is force per unit area and obviously we know what will be the unit right so for pressure uh, yes the unit there are so many units people please understand there are so many units which you can use for pressure but the si unit si unit is newton per meter squared you can see for force it is newton right for area it is meter squared right so obviously for pressure the si unit is newton per meter squared right and this newton per meter squared can also be called as pascal pa right this newton per meter squared another unit right basically pascal is also the si unit right newton per meter squared and pascal are same right so if someone ask you what is the si unit of pressure you either tell them that it is pascal right or you tell them that it is going to be newton per meter squared right so we understood the scenario how gases exert pressure right how gases are exerting pressure 
is because they are undergoing random motion right there can be two types of collision one collision can be between the particles and the other collision can be between the particle and the walls of the container obviously the force with which the all the particles will hit the walls of the container divided by the total area right will give you the pressure uh, applied by the gas okay right fine so now uh, we so understood that the unit is also going to be newton per meter square or pascal right okay now <clears throat> there are other units of pressure also right okay so the other units of pressure are atm bar mm of hg and i have something called as tor all these are the different different units of pressure right you don't have to worry it's easy only right so uh, the s unit of pressure is newton per meter square or pascal other than that i have all these pressure units also to be present atm bar mm of hg tor right i can even talk, talk sometimes in terms of it is the mm or even i can talk in terms of centimeter of mercury <clears throat> all these things works right okay so <coughs> what is this atm right so please understand people when i say 1 atm right if i say 1 atm right 1 atm can be regarded as the pressure right 1 atm can be regarded as the pressure exerted by the atmosphere right 1 atm is regarded as the pressure uh, exerted by the atmosphere at sea level very simple right 1 atm is the pressure exerted by the atmosphere at the sea level at the sea level very simple right and what will be the conversion between your atm and uh, pascal is very simple i have 1 atm is around approximately right it is actually 10123 something like that but we can keep it as 10 power 5 pascal right 1 atm is 10 to the power 5 pascal okay this unit conversion you need to know right lot of times in problems we'll be using this okay so 1 atm is 10 to the power 5 pascals okay and what is the connection between atm and bar very simple now approximately i can say that 1 atm is 1 bar it's actually not exactly 1 bar it is 1.0135 something like that and again approximately we can keep that keep it as 1 atm is equal to 1 bar obviously so now what is the relation between bar and pascal again 1 bar is 10 to the power 5 pascals because 1 atm is 1 bar 1 bar is 10 to the power 5 I mean 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the power 5 pascals right okay now what is the mm of hg like how is it that sir uh, mm is the height right mm we generally measure length or height right and mm of hg what is this in c okay so this is this is where i tell you how do we measure atmospheric pressure right so we know outside like in uh, surrounding us there is a, there is a, there are some gases there is some atmosphere right so those atmospheric gases will also exert pressure on us or say on the ground or whatever it is right so how will we measure that pressure right so for that for that particular purpose we have something called as manometers with us have you ever heard of the term manometer guys have you heard the term manometer nanometer ah m a n o sorry no, device only no, sir yeah it is a, it is an instrument yes it is an instrument have you heard yes sir okay fine so anyways we'll just see some little little things about it okay so basically manometer is an instrument <clears throat> which is used to measure atmospheric pressure okay so manometer is an instrument which is used for measuring atmospheric pressure okay so now how are we going to do it so here we are going to use mercury right so we'll see how it is done 
Okay, so I'm going to have a big vessel full of mercury. This is my mercury. Okay, Hg. Hg is a symbol for mercury. Okay, so what I'm going to have is uh, I'm going to have a. Okay, this this looks like a test tube, but uh, this is not exactly a test tube. I am going to call it as a capillary tube. Okay, what do you mean by capillary tube? A very very thin tube. Very very small thin tube. Length can be anything. Length can be bigger or smaller. Like that doesn't matter. I'm talking about the width. Very small, like like just like a a small syringe. Like you can you can imagine it like that. Anyways, but even if you're gonna if even if you're going to assume it as a test tube, well and good. This still works. Okay, but uh, ideally speaking, right? This should be a capillary tube. Capillary tube is nothing but a tube with very small radius, very thin uh, tube. This word is called as your capillary tube. Okay, fine. So here also I am going to fill it with mercury. Here also, it is filled with mercury. Okay, and assume that uh, I have in the capillary tube, I have some markings. In the capillary tube. i have some markings in terms of length in terms of length okay right so now <coughs> what i do is i take this right i invert it and i put it inside right i take this i invert it i put it inside something like this now this is so totally here i invert it and i put it here right now you can see it is full correct so now it if it is inserted here so you will see that the mercury level is somewhere here the mercury level inside is somewhere here okay right fine now right so now you can you can easily understand that this particular uh, tube right this particular tube is not open to atmosphere here it was open to atmosphere because you can see here it is open to atmosphere right but this tube when it is inverted no it is not uh, open to atmosphere but what is open to atmosphere what is open to atmosphere is this right this particular surface which is here that is the vessel that the bath that is actually open to the atmosphere okay right so obviously what i see these atmospheric gases will exert some pressure onto this okay so what will happen is more if, if, if the pressure is more If there is there is more and more pressure, right? What will you see? The mercury column here inside the tube will rise. Is it not right? So I have some mercury here, right? Depending on how much pressure is applied by the atmospheric gases, right? The mercury level will rise or it comes down. When the pressure is very high, I can say that the the mercury column will keep on moving up, right? If the pressure is decreased. the mercury column will keep on coming down is it not logical correct right yes sir so, right so i can easily understand there is okay, i already told you that there will be some markings here in terms of length right so i obviously know what is the pressure applied here the pressure applied is 1 1 atm if i if i do this experiment in the sea level right if i do this experiment in the sea level normal places not not at kodaikanal not at kashmir if i do that in kashmir whatever the readings i'm going it will be different because i know higher and higher altitudes i go the pressure will decrease right it might not be exactly 1 atm it might be 0.7 or 0.8 atm something like that right so but this experiment we are doing it in sea level normal conditions okay so i know what is the pressure applied the pressure applied by the atmospheric gases is 1 atm right and what i observe and what i observe is the reading here which is shown or wherever the uh what is that wherever the mercury is the last part of the mercury wherever it is i saw that the reading was 760 mm that was the reading which i get right that was the reading which i get on the capillary tube why uh, this height of the mercury column right the height of the mercury column was found to be 760 mm if the atmospheric pressure is 180 atm the guys really understand how like how did we how did we um, come to the 760 right so the atmospheric pressure atmospheric gases are exerting pressure 
and because of this, the mercury column is rising, right? And obviously, I'll reach an equilibrium, right? Obviously, I'll reach an equilibrium, isn't it? So at that equilibrium point, right? I I see that the reading in the tube is 760 mm, right? And eventually, right? This also will become the unit, one of the units of pressure. So I'll call it as 760 mm of Hg is equivalent to one atmospheric pressure. As simple as that, right? 760 mm of Hg is equal to one atmospheric pressure. Okay, so this is the unit conversion again. This is the unit conversion again. One atm <coughs> is 760 mm of Hg, or I can even call it as 76 centimeters of Hg. Anything is fine. Okay, 760 mm of Hg, millimeters, right? Or it can be 760, sorry, 76 centimeters of mercury. Okay, uh, actually, this is not exactly how we get the 760, <coughs> right? Uh, we like hope you can remember there is a formula for pressure. Pressure is rho g h, isn't it? Rho g h. Hope, do you know this formula? Have you seen this formula before, guys? No, sir. Oh, you have not seen this formula. Okay, then take it down. Pressure is rho g h. What is rho? Rho is density. Right, and G is acceleration due to gravity, 9.8, and H is the height. H is the height. Right. So uh, this actually was used here. Right. This actually, I, I'll be able to derive that for you if you want. Right. How is it? Uh, rho, G, and H. You want to see how is it derived? How is it? Yes, that sir. Ah, okay, so we'll see that how this P is equal to we don't want already one formula P is equal to F by A Okay, so that we'll try to use and connect it here <coughs> Right, okay, so till now no problem. We'll just concentrate on this Okay, so I know P is equal to F by A Right, and I know F is mass into acceleration. Correct, MA. See, this A and this A don't confuse. Okay, so I have mass into acceleration divided by volume. Right, that is my pressure. Right, so I know like M by V is what? M by V is what? Mass density. by volume is density. density. Right, mass by volume is density. And I have this. Uh, acceleration due to gravity. Oh, I forgot. Oh, sorry. This is not V, right? This is A. Sorry, not V. Okay, we cannot directly do it. Okay, fine. So now what I'm going to do is I have uh, mass into acceleration divided by area, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, since I want to talk in terms of uh, height. So since you're talking about height of the column and all that, so what I do is I multiply and divide by H. I multiply and divide by H. Okay, so now I already know area I already have, and if I multiply it by wall, multiply it by height, right? I have area. If I multiply it by height, what will I get? Volume. Volume. Exactly, right? So I know area into thickness or area into height will give me the volume, correct? So I write it like this I have mass and acceleration. I have only one type of acceleration assuming it is going to be only gravity, right? So it is mass into G acceleration due to gravity, right? Into H, right? Divided by A into H will become volume, right? And now I know mass by volume is density. So you get this equation. P is equal to rho G H. P is equal to rho G H. Okay, so now I'll be able to tell you how I got the 760 also, right? How exactly now actually what I'm telling you is this readings which are here It is it is not going to exactly give me the length Okay, uh, the 760 value which I got is actually going to come from here, right? 
how because i know already the pressure is 1 atm okay now density now density of mercury density of mercury is around 13.5 gram per ml something like that in that range right or uh, what is that a density of mercury is going to be uh, this range 13.5 cm cube and all that and i know the g value is 9.8 meter per second squared right so now this value i know this value i know this value i know and if i put the height value the height value was found to be 760 m guys do you understand how how we got 760 everybody understood yes sir i have a doubt that okay one more time i'll repeat then you ask me a doubt okay, okay so sir. we derived this formula as p is equal to rho gh okay so now in the experiment which i did i know what was the pressure the pressure is applied by the atmosphere and i know the pressure applied by the atmosphere is 1 atm right and the density can be found it is a liquid that in the liquid density will be constant for a respect of wherever it is whatever it is i mean definitely it depends on the liquid so for mercury the density this is this rho is density right so and that is found to, that is uh, equal to 13 approximately 13.5 gram per centimeter cube or gram per ml right and g we we already know it is 9.8 so h value can be found out right and that h value turns out if you do the all the calculation to be 760 ml yes rohan ask me a doubt so in the formula we are having meter per second square and millimeter so we have to convert it to we will convert definitely formula. definitely 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 right so i know this is meter per second squared so this should be uh, in kg per meter cube only all as a units okay right? sir. and and if you do it in as a units h also you will not get it in directly millimeters you will get it in terms of meters and then you have to convert it okay sir. yeah right so all the units must be definitely same okay, okay so yeah so this is how people we use pressure atmospheric pressure in terms of height of mercury column in terms of your uh, what is that si units pascals right and there is one more called as bar right so that's what we do that's how we do now this whatever we did is for measuring the atmospheric pressure right uh, but a slight variation of this a slight variation of this Uh, this experiment what have we conducted the tube inverted into the vessel all these a slight variation of that can be used to find the pressure of a particular gas right so now still now we're talking about atmosphere right so this experiment can be little modified right to find out what will be the uh, pressure of a particular gas that also can be found out okay so like we'll not go into it right or i'll, I'll tell you actually it's not a big deal like how are we going to find out measure the pressure of a gas with the same experiment but a little modification uh yeah so what we are going to do is okay so this is where i put my gas for which i have to measure the pressure okay fine now this okay this is open to the atmosphere okay so assume that uh, this is my mercury this is atmosphere okay and that is the gas okay right fine so you can easily understand what what is going to happen here uh, like depending on the height of the mercury columns right depending on the height of the mercury columns i will be able to predict what will be the pressure of the gas okay now we need to do some force balances here like it is not as simple as in the previous case right obviously it is little little uh, equations are not are going to come okay so we'll see what is going to happen right uh, right so guys please understand there is going to be some pressure applied by the gas correct there is going to be some pressure applied by the gas okay 
and there is going to be some pressure applied by the atmosphere onto this mercury column isn't it right there is going to be some pressure applied by the mercury sorry 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 on by the atmosphere on the mercury column right same way this side some pressure is applied by the gas onto the mercury column isn't it and obviously at some point of time the mark the heights here and heights here is not going to change they are going to be at a, a stable point right so what does that mean i mean or from the expert what is understood is that this height is different definitely this height is different this height is different right uh, so definitely the pressure here and the pressure in this small area should be equal should be equal and then only the mercury column can stand at a uh, that means the height should, uh, height is not varying the mercury column stands still it freezes right so if i bring in an equation like this say the uh, so what can i say the pressure of the gas the pressure of the gas that to in this height say let me call this height as h1 and let me call this height as h2 okay this height as this particular height as h1 and this particular height as h2 right so the pressure of the gas at h1 height is equal to the pressure or pressure of the atmosphere at h2 correct right so obviously if i write in terms of uh, your densities i can write uh, see here also it is mercury here also it's mercury so i just wait is basically going to be <coughs> uh, the density of mercury into the g value it is going to be same the only thing which will be varying is my h1 am i doing correctly ah okay fine no problem right now if i directly speak i know what is atmosphere right i know that atmosphere this thing will directly be 760 mm we already know it because it's one atmosphere i know it will it is going to be 760 mm Right, so I know the G value. I know the rho G value. If I find the H value for this, right, and if I convert that H value in terms of atm or bar, I will be able to find what is the pressure of the gas. Okay, but anyways, even if you didn't understand this, it doesn't matter. I do just all extra information for you given, right? So anyways, so by this this kind of setup is what is called as your YouTube manometers. YouTube, not your watching YouTube. This is this YouTube, YouTube manometers. Okay, so these are the one which are used for measuring the pressure of a gas. Right. So anyways, it is not important. So what is important is the 760 mm and one atmospheric pressure are equal, and that pressure conversion is what is more important for you. Okay. and lastly what is this tor t o r r that also i gave you right so nothing tor and mm of hg are same right so please understand this uh, i have 1 mm of hg is 1 tor very very simple right mm of hg and tor are exactly same right so how can i convert how can i connect my atm with tor very simple so one atm is 760 tor why because it is equal to 760 mm of hg right so you need to know all the unit conversions of our pressure i have atm newton per meter squared so remember atm and bar are same one bar is almost equal to one atm right and one bar is equal to 1 atm is equal to 10 to the power 5 pascal and pascal is the si unit newton per meter squared that is the si unit right and the other two units that is your mm of hg and your tor are exactly same right uh, one mm of hg is one tor uh, but if you look into the uh, atm to <coughs> what is that your bar this thing mm of hg conversion one atm is 760 mm of hg Or one atm is seven sixty tor, right? So yeah, these are all the different different units of pressure. Okay, now moving to volume. Don't worry, I'll I'll finish it soon today, right? So when I speak about volume, we know what exactly volume is. It is the space, how much space that particular uh, species is taking for uh, for its being, 
right? So obviously, when I talk about gases, gases can occupy any volume, whatever the volume you are gonna give it, give it to the gases, they can occupy the entire volume, right? Say I have some amount of gas. If I want to, uh, I have a very small vessel. If I want to contain the gas in that vessel, yes, I'll be able to do it, right? Or if I want to uh, just open it up, so I give this entire room for it to occupy, this will occupy the entire room, right? So please try to understand volume for a gas is going to depend upon the volume of the vessel. Please understand. So when I say, especially like when I speak about liquids or gases, sorry, liquids or solids, right? So the volume which I'll be speaking is the actual volume of that solid or that liquid. But if we are going to the gas, there is that little uh, care should be taken that <clears throat> when I say volume, it's, uh, it's about the volume of the vessel in which the gas particles are present, right? Because whatever volume you give to the gases, whatever the volume you give to the gases, gases will occupy all those volumes. So they cannot say that, ah, okay, I have 20 ml of a gas in atmosphere, stupidity. Right, because like in atmosphere, it's, it's it's infinite volume, so the gases will occupy the infinite volume, right? So we will not be able to speak in terms in terms of volume if the volume is not in any vessel, right? So yeah, the gas should be in a vessel, and the volume which we are speaking is going to be about the volume of the vessel that is indirectly equal to the volume of the gas. Obviously, it is going to be like that. Okay. So now what are all the different different units of uh, pressure, sorry, volume, right? We know we have something called as meter cube, centimeter cube, uh, milliliters, liters. These are all the, uh, like say, common units we use, isn't it? Now I'll give you the conversions. Very easy. Please understand one centimeter cube is one ml. This alone, you know, everything will be able to, everything else will come into the picture very, very easily. Okay, and I have to know one more thing also. I ha I need to know <coughs> uh, 1000 ml is one liter. This is very easy. We already know, right? Say if I want to have a connection between saying meter cube and liter, right? If I need to have a conversion between meter cube and liters, how can we do it? So now for converting, so I'll take this one centimeter cube is one ml, okay? So now what I want is I want centimeter cube in terms of meter cube and I want uh, this uh, ml in terms of liter, okay? So obviously what should I do? I have to multiply this by thousand because one, one liter is thousand ml, right? And if I want to convert centimeter cube to meter cube, so remember this, one uh, hundred centimeter is one meter, or I can write it as 10 to the power two centimeters is equal to one meter. Now, when I do cube on both sides, what will become? It should become 10 to the power six, right? So please understand 10 to the power six centimeter cube is one meter cube. I'm just cubing on both sides. Right, so one meter cube is 10 to the power six centimeter cube. Now, I'll instead of 10, 1000, I'll write it as 10 to the power three, and instead of this, I'll write is 10 to centimeter cube, I write it as 10 to the power six, right? Am I doing it? Sorry, 10 to the power minus six. Sorry. Okay, please, please understand I'm converting a smaller unit to a bigger unit. Again, smaller unit to a bigger unit. So it should be 10 to the power minus three, 10 to the power minus six here. Okay, you understand why I, why I put a minus sign? I'm converting centimeter cube to meter cube. If I, if I convert meter cube to centimeter cube, then I'll multiply by 10 to the power six. Right, okay, anyways. So I have 10 to the power minus six meter cube is equal to 10 to the power minus three liters. So now I'll be able to write this as 10 to the power minus three. So I can write one meter cube is 10 to the power three liters. Very simple, that is thousand liters, right? So one meter cube is thousand liters. One centimeter cube is one ml and thousand ml is one liter. These three things, 
or even if you don't remember this it's fine but if you can remember this 1 cm cube is 1 ml right you can actually derive the other things okay and mostly you will be using in the problems also the centimeter cube and centimeter cube to ml conversion only okay other than that nothing much you will be doing and obviously sometimes to ml to liters that also you'll use okay fine and last and last that's about the volume now only thing is there which is my temperature we already know temperature we already know there are going to be two three units right so for temperature okay no doubt i guess here so for temperature we'll speak in depth about temperature in the next chapter that is my thermodynamics right but for now just understand that the temperature is the measure of how hot or how cold the body is right we already know the definitions right so we know the unit unit can be kelvin that is the this is the si unit oh and, and obviously when i go for your uh, what is that uh, volume meter cube is the si unit What is the SI unit for volume? No volume. Meter cube is the SI unit, not liters. It's meter cube. Okay. So now, when I go for temperature, it is the uh, Kelvin is the SI unit K, right? And I, other than that, I have Celsius degrees, Celsius Fahrenheit, and all that. So we know how what we have to do to convert Kelvin to Celsius degrees, right? So for converting Kelvin to Celsius degrees. right i have to subtract 273 kelvin 273 right and if i want to convert uh, celsius degrees to kelvin add 273 so this will be able to convert it into kelvin that we already know right and what is the conversion between celsius degrees and fahrenheit like it is not important but still we'll just know the formula right so i have f if you want the value in terms of fahrenheit It's equal to nine by five into the Celsius degree value plus thirty-two. Okay, so it's a degree Fahrenheit is equal to nine by five, and the value in terms of uh, Celsius degrees plus thirty-two is the conversion between F and C, and this is the conversion between K and C. Okay, so these are all the different units. These are all the different measurable parameters of the gas. The three things: pressure, volume, and temperature. Now we have understood what are all these things. All what are all these things? Okay. So in the next class, we will vary one of the parameters and see what is happening to the other parameters. Okay, and that obviously we'll be seeing in turn. Now we are not the first ones to do this. Like I mean, changing one parameter and see see what is happening to the others. We are not the first ones. Already some scientists have done it. so we will be you will be seeing the same exact uh, real life applications in terms of laws say boyle's law charles law gay lussac's law avogadro's law ideal gas equation like this you will be seeing in terms of uh, what is that laws rather than seeing in terms of experiments okay so yeah people that's it for today right so next class we'll be seeing what i told until then bye bye so i have a doubt in the redox yeah. chapter sir Yes, Kana. Uh, did you explain the the Daniel cell? This last part, electro. Oh, you have cell. Daniel cell. And we have that cell, I think. I'll explain it next class because I thought you'll be studying again about Daniel cells in the twelfth, but I didn't know that this was there. But still, I can explain next class. It will take only five minutes. Okay, sir. Easy. Right, but remind me. Okay, next class. Yes, sir. But I. Okay. Cool. Any 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 other doubts, people? Okay. So that's the case. We'll see you again. Thank you. We'll meet. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.